For most digital artists, the paintbrush tool and the erase brush tool are essential for creating artwork. They are both raster tools, so can be found in the Pixel Persona. The paintbrush tool is used for painting and drawing, and the erase brush tool is used for removing brush strokes. They both work in conjunction with the brushes panel. To start painting, I can select the paintbrush tool and choose a colour. Raster brush strokes can only be placed on a pixel layer. I can create a pixel layer by clicking Add Pixel Layer at the bottom of the Layers panel, or I can simply hold the left mouse button and start painting. The assistant will appear letting me know that a pixel layer has been created. By default, it will paint with a basic round brush. However, this doesn't suit the subject. If I open the Brushes panel again, I can choose a different brush from a range of categories. Dry media is great for adding texture. Brushes from this collection are designed to look like chalks, crayons, charcoals and pastels. I'd like to have another go at this now that I have a more suitable brush, so I'll erase my previous strokes by selecting the Erase Brush tool from the Tools panel. Making sure the correct layer is selected, I can hold the left mouse button to remove the stroke. Now I'll press B to move back to my Paintbrush tool and try again. Any parts that go over can be removed with the Erase Brush tool and I can quickly switch to it using E. I could resize the brush head on the context toolbar, or I could use the open and close brackets on the keyboard. You can also select brushes for the erase brush tool to change how the strokes are removed. I'll select the same textured brush to break up the clean edges. And then use B to switch back to the paintbrush tool. The main settings to affect the paintbrush tool are the width, Opacity, Flow and Hardness. You can't change the hardness on a textured brush, so I'll switch to a soft basic brush and select the Clouds layer to paint some clouds. I'll also select a white on the colour panel. When Wet Edge is enabled, the paint strokes will have a more opaque edge. This mimics the appearance of watercolours and washers, but I'll turn it off for now. If you hold Ctrl and Option on Mac or Ctrl and Alt on Windows and the left mouse button, you can change the brush width by moving left and right. If the brush has a hardness attribute, you can change this by moving up and down. The width is the size of the brush and hardness determines how diffused the edge becomes. You can also cycle through other brush attributes by keeping Ctrl and Option held down and clicking the left mouse button. One click will display shape and spacing, where moving left and right will change the shape and up and down will increase or decrease the spacing. Another click will show you rotation and you can hold the left mouse button to change the angle. A third click will take you back to width and hardness. I can instantly change opacity by tapping the numeric keys. For example, 5 will reduce the brush's opacity to 50%. But I can also be more accurate and tap 0.5 for 5%. These keyboard shortcuts are great for changing settings on the fly. To soften the clouds, I can use a large smudge brush and blend it all together. And then switch back to the paintbrush tool using B. The flow determines how fast the pixel brush effect is applied. This is particularly effective with textured brushes like on this brickwork here. I'll clip a pixel layer inside this brickwork to clip the brush texture to the bricks only. I'll find a textured brush and adjust the size with the brackets. I'll also choose a pale grey colour. A flow of 1% is very slow and 100% is immediate. The flow is set to 62, which is very strong, so I'll lower it to around 15%. I'll also lower the opacity to 30% by tapping 3. This creates a nice highlighted effect on the stones. You can also return to specific brush setups later on if you need to. If we look at the active pixel layer, we can see a little brush icon. You can click this to see the brush history for this layer and select it to restore those brush settings. If you're drawing with a pressure sensitive device, like a graphics tablet, you might want to enable force pressure to control size. 
This will override brush defaults and we'll use the tablet inputs instead. Both the paintbrush tool and the erase brush tool have access to the stabilizer to paint or erase more smoothly. It has two different modes, the rope mode and the window mode, and the length of them can be adjusted here. The longer the length is set, the smoother the line will be. Symmetry can also be enabled from here, and you can set up the number of lines of symmetry and their behaviours. The paintbrush tool and erase brush tool can also be used alongside vector tools. Let me show you in this next example. We can use the paintbrush tool and the erase brush tool to add raster elements to vector illustrations. Here I'm already in the pixel persona and I have my paintbrush tool selected. I'm going to select my vector curve and go to the brushes panel to find a textured brush. I'll increase the size a little bit and reduce the opacity to 30%. Now I can start painting some noise texture on the mug. Again, the assistant has appeared, telling me that a pixel layer has been created and it has been clipped to the vector curve layer. When I'm happy, I can switch to the erase brush tool and clean up some of the textures and even use a textured brush to erase. Another way you might use the paintbrush tool is for masking. I'll move to my final example to demonstrate this. I want to remove the clean edges from this photo. I could do this by rasterizing the photo and then erasing the edges, but this is destructive. Instead, I will select the photo and choose to add a non-destructive mask layer. Now I can select the paintbrush tool and a textured brush. Black will mask layer content, enabling us to see the object below, in this case the black background. So I'll select black and start painting along the edges of the photo. If I encroach too far into the photo, I can switch to white and paint the mask away to reveal the image layer content. So that was a look at how to get started using the paintbrush tool and erase brush tool and the different ways that they might be used. Thanks for watching.